Hello, in this video, I will going over a Slenderman style tutorial death screen. Not every aspect of it but just the main part. I won't be using widgets for this but this method can be adapted to use widgets and render opacity. Here is a short overview of what I mean, when you look at the Slenderman AI, you can see the noise and vignette slowly increase, and once it hits a certain amount of seconds, it can kill the player. This is also reversible once you stop staring at the AI. Anyway, let's start by editing your player character. I think first person camera a would fit this style. It is pretty quick to do, delete the camera boom or spring arm. Then drag and drop the camera onto your player mesh. Your camera's parent socket would be the head bone which you can search in this list. That is if your player mesh has a head bone. It just makes attaching the camera a bit easier when you adjust these values. Other than that, you can tick use pawn control rotation, which means the camera will be still to the rotation of the pawn. Next, select class defaults and make sure to tick use control rotation yaw. Now test to see if it works, and if it does you can now make your Slenderman enemy. Right click on content browser and create a blueprint character. Open it up and give it a mesh, I will just use the basic mannequin. Make sure that the mesh faces this blue arrow and is on the ground of the capsule collision. You can copy my values here. Next, we will need to add a sphere collision. With this collision, size it up, this is the range where we toggle the attack timer. This is optional, as you can always keep it on. Anyway, go to the event begin play, delete everything here and let's create our event. This is for when we stare at the enemy. We can a branch and the condition is the was actor recently rendered. This node checks if our actor is in our camera view or not. This tolerance value determines how recent. I don't want this effect to happen if he is just nearly outside of our view. 0.001 will be good enough for me. Next, get an event begin play, and cast to your player character. Right click the as player test return value and promote it to variable. We can now add a timeline and get our character ref. This timeline will be the actual noise and vignette effect. We can use the player character's camera and set post process settings. To actually set the settings, do a make post process settings. Now we just need to select certain settings, I would say grain jitter and grain intensity is important. Also select the vignette intensity to feel like you are fading. Next, it is important to lerp through two values for this to work. Zero and then your max value, you can do various values, see what works for you. I am not too bothered, so I am just going to use the same values for all of them. The B value being 2 or 5. Next, double click the timeline to open it up. In there, you can create a float timeline, you can name it alpha. This timeline is the length of how long you are allowed to stare at the slender before you die. I will make it 4 seconds. Then I will set a key, one being at either 0 seconds at 0 value or maybe a few seconds in. The last key can be at 4 seconds and the value has to be 1. After that is done, you can just go back to your event graph and drag the alpha to the lerp alpha. Now you can just connect this timeline to the branch, for true, it plays, and for false it reverses. But I am just gonna make two events, player stare start and stop. In here, I just search the component which is the timeline and I can then set the play rate and then call the play and reverse functions. The play rate, I can adjust, I want it to go faster when we stop staring. Anyway, now we can just call these new events we created, the start and stop. The events are done. I am just going to toggle it using the sphere collision, if you click on your sphere collision that we added earlier, in the details panel, Scroll down to the green buttons, we need the begin overlap and end overlap. In these events, we just cast to our players, 
and then when we begin overlap, just call the set timer by function name, the function name is our attack event, the player stare enemy, the one with the branch, anyway, the time will just be how frequent do you want this detection to be and make sure it loops. Next, on our end overlap, we just clear timer and input the same name, I will just write a little comment here, as an alternative, you can just use a cone. Now to test the game, just put Slenderman in, and see if it all works for now. If it all works, we can now do the final part which is the death. Now that is simply just going to the end of the timeline, go to the finished, and add a branch, we want to check if our timeline has reached the 4 second mark or whatever your end time is. Get your timeline and get playback position which is the current time of the timeline. I send both alternatives method. One is to do it manually, by entering the number or just getting the node get timeline length which is essentially the same as the max time. The death can be however you want it, I am just going to print string and pause game. You can now test the game to see if it works. For me, I know it works, so I am just gonna say my end message. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, commenting and sharing and see you next time.